Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I am in my craft room and that can only mean one thing. We are doing a craft video today. Um, I don't know if you all recall, but quite a while back, I came across this gorgeous Robin's Egg Blue frame. As you can see, it was originally from Hobby Lobby for 50 bucks. I was going, I knew I wanted to do something with this. Um, so I came down today and I was going through some of my beautiful decoupage rice papers <coughs> and I came across this one and it will go perfectly with this frame. I am so excited. So let me just show you. Um, what I will do so that this can be um, a winter picture rather than Christmas is I will probably not use this um, font down here. I will try to um, hide that. <laughs> this picture fits perfectly in that space. So the first thing that I'm going to have to do is paint the black part of that white. Um, anytime you do uh, decoupage and you're using, well, any kind of item, uh, be it a napkin, tissue paper, uh, decoupage paper, rice paper, anything like that, you always want the background that you're going to put your paper on to be white or ivory because your image will show exactly the way it looks. If you have a dark background, then it's going to darken the look of your image. So that's rule number one. So rule number two, painting this area. Now, <coughs> excuse me. If I don't feel like painting that, what I can do is get another piece of uh, poster board or, you know, the foam board that they sell at Dollar Tree or um, a piece of uh, smooth cardboard. And I can take that, cut it to fit in there and paint that. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I am just going to paint this black, um, this black area. Now it does come right out of the back. Um, what I'm going to have to do, I don't like that there's a little, um, there's a little dimple here. Um, hopefully it doesn't show through too bad, um, on the finished item. But the first thing we're going to have to do is remove the stickers. So I am going to set this over here. And I'm going to try to turn the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. So all I'm going to do, and if you don't have a heat gun, you can certainly use a blow dryer. Same thing. I'm going to heat the stickers up and then they will peel right off. See how easy that comes off? There we go. So the next thing I'll do is I'll get a little bit of Goo Gone or what I usually use is um, it's stuff called Undo and you can get it on Amazon. And um, I will get rid of this um, sticky residue. So this is the item I'm talking about, Undo. 
and I just take a cotton ball, squeeze some on the cotton ball, and you'll see it takes that sticky residue off with no problem. And kudos to Misty over at Thrifter Junk or Vintage Hunter, because she's the one that told me about this stuff. This is great, and you can use it on paper and everything. All right, so now I'm going to flip this over, and I'm going to open up all these little uh, clamp things. I should just get my little screwdriver over here and do it. Well, that's not my little one, but that's why I have no nails, guys. <laughs> I'm very hard on my hands, as you can see. All right, so I'm going to just take this piece right out so that I can paint it. I'm going to move this out of the way so it doesn't get paint on it. Just set it over there. All right, so uh, what I did was I just wiped this off because it was dusty from sitting for so long. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I have uh, Rust-Oleum chalked paint, and this is linen white. And I'm going to give it a little stir. I'm stirring. <laughs> I know you can't see it, but I'm stirring it because it does uh, settle somewhat. Okay, get my brush, get it all off of the stick. I didn't feel like going to get a paint stick, so I'm using a dowel. <laughs> okay, so basically I'm just going to put a couple, um, couple coats on here to cover it up, cover up that black. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you want a pretty good coverage on there, you know? Because it's going to be covered with the um, the decoupage rice paper. Um, there's a bunch of different places that I buy my, my papers from. Um, I will be sure and link those in uh, the description box of the video. Um, and I will also, I got the, um, they do sell this uh, chalked paint, the linen white. They do sell it at Walmart. Um, I bought it from Walmart before, but I think I also got it on Amazon as well, um, if I'm not mistaken. But I will leave links to everything um, in the description box that I am using in this video today. I'm going to try to, you know, get an even coat going. I love chalk paint because it covers everything. It's awesome. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, get my heat gun and I'm going to dry this up real quick um, because it saves on time. And I will put my second coat on and then I'll come back.
Okay, guys, so now, as you can see, I have the board that I've painted, and now I'm going to kind of dry fit this on here. Um, I know that I want to make sure I cut off this best wishes down here on the bottom. So I'm going to, I want to make sure everything is straight. Okay, yeah, so that's, so we're going to lose a, a little bit of the reindeer's legs, but that's all right. Okay, so I pretty much got it where I want it. So now what I'm going to do is I have, uh, you can use Mod Podge. The only thing I don't like about Mod Podge is it's really, really thick. Um, so you could use that and just uh, water it down a little bit so it's easier to spread. Um, I use this. It's called, uh, it's by um, DIY and it's called Liquid Patina. And it is also like a Mod Podge. And I like it because it's a lot easier to work with than um, regular Mod Podge. So what I do is once I get everything exactly where I want it, um, I will uh, grab a brush. Uh, let's see. This one should be fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift up part of it. And then I'm going to take my, my liquid patina and I'm going to spread. I'm just going to do it a section at a time. And I'm going to put a nice even coat of your Mod Podge or whatever, you know, you like to use. Making sure to get the edges really, uh, really well. Okay. And then I'm going to lay it down. And before I even touch it, I'm going to grab some Saran Wrap and ball it up. And then I'm going to lightly... Go from the middle to the outside. So that I don't end up with um, air bubbles. And you don't want to be real, um, real harsh with it. Now this is a pretty thick um, paper. So I'm going to have to add a little bit more Mod Podge. Or Mod Podge, Mod Podge liquid patina, whatever, um, over here towards the edges, and I'm I'm ending up with bubbles, which is really aggravating me. So I'm trying to carefully get them out. What I'll end up doing, though, is once I get this all down, um, I will come back and get a, with a brayer and roll over it. Okay, so now I'm going to peel this end up. Let me turn this this way, guys. I'm going to peel this end up. And I am going to start laying a strip here. There is another way to do this um, that will guarantee that you don't get wrinkles. And that is a whole other video, which I will show you guys. Um, it's called the iron on method. And basically what you would do is you would paint the board underneath here, paint the board with your Mod Podge and then let it dry completely. Then you would take your decoupage paper, place it on top, then get a piece of parchment paper and put the parchment paper over the top of this. And then with an iron on the cotton setting, you would just iron over it until everything is adhered and it comes out beautifully, which I should have thought of that before I um, did it this way, but hey. Okay. 
it's all hindsight, you know? Okay, so now I have to put a coat of this over the top. Just want to make sure, I'm trying to make sure to get as much of the, see there's a bubble here. Sometimes you could poke it with a pin and get it out. Sometimes that'll work. But anyway, so... This is really difficult paper to work with. There's bubbles in here, and I'm just trying to work them out. I feel like the thicker the paper, the harder it is to work with for some reason. But, um, okay, where's my brayer? All right, now I'm going to, this is a brayer. It's a little roller on a handle. And this will help to get rid of your bubbles and stuff. So I'm just going to go up and down over, over it and make sure that I get rid of all of the bubbles before I put my Mod Podge on top. Okay, that's much better. You definitely want to invest in a brayer. They're not expensive at all. They make all different types of them. All right, now we're gonna go over this with a coat of my liquid patina. All right, guys, so we're going to let this dry, and then when I come back, I'll show you how we're going to take off all of the excess paper. Surprise, guys! We have a second project we're going to do today. A lot of people were asking uh, for me to show how I do my rolling pin upcycles. Now, some of my rolling pins I do decoupage on, and some of them I do rub-on transfers. <clears throat> excuse me this one is going to be a rub-on transfer one and we're going to do lemons on this one um so the first thing i would do is i would clean the rolling pin just to make sure there's no uh yuckies on it um i just take a, a wipe an antibacterial wipe Ooh, 
this is saturated. That's my last couple there. Um, and I just wipe it really good. Sometimes you can use um, crud cutter, it's called. I have that, but I don't have it down here. It's upstairs. Um, but this is really not too bad, so I'm just going to wipe it down with a wipe. And you want to make sure to do um, the ends, because we're going to paint this whole rolling pin. Okay, so that looks pretty good. It's not it's not really bad at all. You can't really tell till you actually start wiping it off. See the dirt? So you want to make sure to get as much of that off as you can so that your paint will stick. All right, so... I'm going to grab some paper towel and dry this off. All right. So, um, when I was at an estate sale, I picked up this this guy was a woodworker and he had all kinds of scrap wood and stuff. And I picked up this little uh, cutie patootie because I knew it would hold my rolling pin. <laughs> um, that was like one of my favorite finds at that sale, okay? <laughs> so now I have some, um, this is called Summer Porch. And this is folk art chalk paint in this beautiful yellow color. And I'm, I am going to paint the, the handles first. Come on. Oh my goodness, really? It could stand to be a little bit darker. So I could add some of this yellow acrylic paint into it. Whoa! <laughs> that came out pretty quick. Let me find a paintbrush here. All right, so I'm going to mix this together. <laughs> get all of that pretty yellow it's still not dark enough for my taste but I think it'll be all right all right so I'm just going to start painting the the handles and you'll want to hold on to it with you, you know so that it doesn't move around when you're trying to paint it
Okay, so when while we're waiting for the handles to dry, I am going to start painting the edges with um, the white chalk paint. And the easiest way for me to do this is to just hold it in my hand and paint it that way. It's much easier. I am using the white, um, linen white chalk paint that I showed you um, in the beginning of the video that I used for the picture. And it's hard for me to keep it in frame because I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> I give so much kudos to all these people that do those amazing upcycle videos because I am not good at film and craft videos, that is for sure. All right, now I'm going to do this other, um, this other end. Try to do it so you can see. I like to use a smaller brush when I'm doing the ends so that I don't get paint all over my handle. Um, so now once I get these areas done, then I'll move on to a bigger brush and I'll just use this old crappy one. So now I can sit this down and start painting it with the white paint. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to finish painting the rest of this and then it's going to have to dry. So what I usually do is I can't put it back in the holder because it's going to mess up all the paint. Um, what I usually do is stand it up in something that's tall and has a hole. <laughs> um, actually, the thing I use, used to use, I don't have anymore because <laughs> it was something that I sold. So um, what you could do is uh, stand it. Let's see. Okay, so I had this tall vase. So I just sat it in there to dry. Or you could hold on to the handle and dry it with your heat gun. Um, and if it makes a little mark from the rim of the vase, you could just touch that up later. Okay, guys. So, um, I put two and let's say a half coats on this rolling pin. I did two full coats and then I touched up any place where I thought needed just a little bit more paint. Um, so I'm going to let this dry a little bit longer. So while we're waiting for this to dry, I'm going to set it off to the side here we are going to come back to our picture um it's 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 not a hundred percent dry but it's dry enough to where we can uh sand off this extra paper on the ends so you just need um a, a piece of like maybe you know uh 120 grit sandpaper um, I have a little sanding tool right here. It's called a finger sander. And I'm just going to, in a downward motion, go in a downward motion. This is thick paper. And it will take this off in a nice clean, with a nice clean edge. I'm 
sorry guys i'm off frame out of frame i should say i'm gonna put it over the edge here and do it So there's that edge. Now we're going to do this edge here and I'm just going to I'm going to hang it over the edge and So there it is. It's a nice, even, clean edge on both sides. So now this is ready to go back in our frame. Hopefully, let's see how it's going to look. Let me put the frame up here. There's always got to be one area that gives you a hard time. You know what I'm saying? There we go. Push these back down. It could use another piece of cardboard in here. So what I'll probably do is uh, take it back out, measure this piece, um, and cut out a piece of cardboard go on the top. Oh my God, you guys, look it. Oh my gosh, hold on. Oh my God, that is awesome. OMG. Oh my God, I am so excited about the way this came out. Now, the only thing I have to do is somewhere in transport of this frame, we got a ding right there. And I think I have the color paint that um, will match it so I can touch that up. But look at that. Oh, I am so excited. Yes. All right, guys. So now it's time to put our lemon transfers onto our rolling pin. Um, these are made by Iron Orchid Designs. Um, I will put links, as I said, to everything that I use um, in the description box. So I have used some of these already. Um, so I'm going to pick out some that I would like to put on here. Okay, so I've decided I'm going to use this big, long um, section here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to make a crease here where I need to, to cut it off. However, it's not, it's not cooperating. But I know it has the grids here, so I kind of know whereabouts I need to cut. So, I'm going to just cut it right on the, the grid line here. And you can cut apart your transfers because you could use this on something else. All right, so what I'm going to do is I am going to peel this off and I'm going to start it right here at the top. Okay. And then I'm gonna make sure that I have it all the way around. And then I'm gonna take my, my transfer stick 
and I'm going to start rubbing. And you will see when your transfer is starting to come off of the transfer paper because it will get lighter in color. I'm going to go over the whole transfer first one time and then I will go back and start rubbing over it again and as I rub I will lift up a corner of the transfer paper and start lifting up as I uh, rub it on. And you want to make sure that your chalk paint is dry really well because if you don't, the transfer can pull up your paint, which you don't want. So, all right, so let's see where we're at so far. And if you pull up your uh, transfer paper and see that there's some of the transfer still stuck on it, just lay it back down and burnish it again until it comes off of the transfer paper. So, as you can see, you can see the difference in the color. Okay? When you're, that's how you know that it's coming off because it'll be much lighter here and it's darker up here. So let's go. Now I'm just going to burnish it with my fingers to make sure that it's stuck really well onto the rolling pin. Sometimes you'll get wrinkles um, in your transfers. I don't know why that happens. Um, a lot of times because it's on a, uh, a round surface that will happen. Um, but yeah, that looks pretty cool. I love it. Okay, the thing I'm not loving is the color of the handles. I need to darken up those handles, which I will end up uh, painting over uh, the handles because I don't. It's the, I want the color to match the lemon. I mean, it's not bad, but it needs uh, the yellow paint needs a little bit of orange added to it. Um, so now I'm not going to add any more lemons on here because I think it looks wonderful the way it is. Um, I may add, I may add another leaf though. Um, I do. I think I'm going to add this, um, this piece of leaf right here. Because um, when I was 
for some reason, I got a mark on there, so I'm going to cover that up with a transfer. I'm just going to add another leaf, I think. Like this, yeah, I think that's what I'll do. Okay. There we go. There, see? Oh, this came out nice. I really like it. Okay, so now the only thing left to do is to um, uh, seal it in. So uh, to do that, I'm going to go over this with a coat of the DIY liquid patina. Uh, you could use Mod Podge. Um, you can use uh, polycrylic um, sealer. Actually, I think that's what I'm going to use today. Uh, polycrylic uh, sealer. That's what I'm going to use today since this is going to go in a kitchen uh, for decoration. And if it should be in an area where there's grease and stuff, um, this will protect it. If I could get it open. Gosh. Holy moly. All right. Uh, let me, I'm going to use my little fan brush here, I think, to put this on. So I'm going to do part of it, let it dry, and then roll it over and do the other part. Okay guys, what I decided to do, instead of repainting um, the handles, what I decided to do is, I'm gonna put a coat of uh, natural finishing wax on the handles first, and then I'm gonna go over them with some dark brown wax to darken up that yellow so it's not so in your face. So let's see what happens with that. I'm just gonna take a rag and the wax will also seal your chalk paint as well. My fingers are not wanting to work for me today. Okay, there's that one. Now we'll put some on this side. So if you put the dark wax on this before you put on clear wax, you won't be able to wipe off very much of the dark wax. The, the clear wax uh, makes it easier to wipe back your darker wax colors. So you always want to put your clear wax on first. Now, we'll take some of the dark wax. And I'm going to use a brush so I can make sure to get it in these little uh, crannies here. So this is the dark wax. I'm just going to use my brush here. And I'm going to go and make sure, I'm going to hold this so I can get it in all of the little crevices that are on here. Okay, and then I will make sure to get the rest of it. And this dark wax will tone that yellow down quite a bit, so like I said, so it's not so um, 
bright yellow. And then I'll take a rag and I'll just wipe this back. See, it toned it down quite a bit. Now we'll do this side. I've already done the polyurethane on the rest of the uh, polyacrylic, I should say, on the rest of the rolling pin. And that's dry. So now I'm just working on this. All right. So here is your finished rolling pin, guys. Hold on. Let me turn this up. Here is the rolling pin. I love how this turned out. See, it's not hard at all, guys. So we've got this beautiful rolling pin that we worked on today and this amazing picture oh my gosh i i'm a happy girl <laughs> i hope y'all enjoyed this craft video uh if you did please don't forget to give it a thumbs up don't forget to comment share and subscribe and i will see you guys in my next one bye